Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to find the critical points for this function and determine if there's a maximum or a minimum or a saddle point at that critical point. So first, we have to start by finding, finding the partial derivatives for x and y. So for this one, we would find a partial derivative and we would bring down as 2. So 2 times 3 is going to be 6, and then 6x because we would minus subtract 1 from this 2, right, using the power rule. And then here, partial derivative, we have a y here, we treat this y as a constant, and so it would just be 2y, these are the constants, right? And then the x, well, if we were differentiating that, we would subtract 1 from the exponent of 1 in the x, and that would just be 0, so it's not going, to, we're not writing any x's. And then here, well, there's a y, and there's another y, and there's no x's, so these are just going to be constants, so it's going to be constants. And so if you differentiate constants, you get 0. So that's why these become 0. So now let's simplify this 6x plus 2y. Now for fy, we're going to do the same thing. So we are going to get, well, this is x, right? There's no y variable, so we treat it as a constant. And if we differentiate constant, we get 0. And then here, there's 2x times y. And so 2x, we treat 2x as a constant, right? And then it's multiplied by y. And if we were to differentiate something like that, it would just be 2x, right? Because this y is to the exponent of 1. So you would subtract 1 from this y, and it would be y to the exponent of 0. So we wouldn't really write that. And then here, y again. So we bring in this 2. 2 times 4 is 8. And that's power rule. And then we write the y. So we subtract 1 from here, and it'll be y to the exponent of 1. And then here, it's going to be just 5. Just like that. And then we simplify this. So now, to find the critical point, we have to set these two equal to 0. So we have to set fx equals to 0 and fy equal to 0. So we're going to do that. So this is going to be equal to 0, and this is going to be equal to 0, just like that. So we can call this equation 1, and we can call this equation 2. And we can see that from equation 2, we can reorganize equation 2. Let's reorganize that. So from equation 2, we can bring this 5 over here. Negative 5 equals 2x plus 8y. And we will get equation 3. And why did I do that? Well, it's because then you see how this equation and this equation sort of matches up. And then we could take this equation 3 and multiply by 3 so that this, um, this can become 6x as well. We can do that. So let's do that. So if we take 3 and let's say we multiply by, by 3, right? We would multiply by 3 here, negative 5 times 3 is going to be negative 15. And then 2x times 3, it's going to be 6x. And then plus 8y times 3, that's going to be 24y. And then we get this equation 4. And now we can actually work with this equation and this equation. Equation 1 and 4. So let's write equation 1 and 4 together. So basically this equation and this equation. We can now take this equation, write, write them together. And we can take them and we can subtract them. Right, basically solving linear systems here. So we can find the values of x and y that basically satisfy this fx equals 0 and fy equals 0 so we're going to subtract that 0 minus negative 15 is going to be 15 6x minus 6x is going to be 0x 2y minus 24y is going to be negative 22y 
and then if we solve for y, it would just be negative 15 over 22 dividing both sides by negative 22. So now we got our y. Now for our x, we just have to substitute it back in to one of our equations. So substitute our to get our x. Let's say we use, let's use a simpler equation. Let's use equation one. So equation one looks like this. So we know our y is equal to negative 15 over 22. So we can substitute that in. So we can sub y equals negative 15 over 22 back into this equation. 6x plus 2 times negative 15 over 22. And then 6x plus, well, we simplify this. This is going to be divided by 11 here. No, sorry, divide by 2 here, divide by 2 here, this is going to be 11. It's going to be negative 15 over 11, like that. And then we take this and we put it on the other side, so it's going to be 15 over 11 equals 6x. And then from here we will get x is equal to 15 over 11 times 6, because we divide both sides by 6. And then once we do that, we can divide this by 3, it's going to be 5, divide this by 3, it's going to be 2, so this will give us 5 over 22, just like that, and therefore our critical point, critical point, in this case is 5 over 22, comma, and y is negative 15 over 22, so negative 15 over 22. So now we have to move on to the next step of determining as to whether this point is a max, a min, or a saddle point. Well, I mean, this is not going to be a max or a min, but like if it represents, if the value at that point is a max or a min, or a saddle point. So from before, we found that this is our critical point, and these are fx and fy are partial derivatives. So now we are going to have to see as to whether this critical point is a max or a min. And so to do that, we first have to find, we have to find the second order partial derivatives. So to do that, we have to find the derivative of this, okay, 6x plus 2y. And here we have to do it with respect to x, right, because there's a second x here. So we're going to do that. And the second or derivative, so if we were to find a derivative of this, it's just going to be 6, and then this 6x is here, right? It's 2 to the exponent of 1, so you bring down the 1 and subtract 1 from here, so it's like this 1 gets subtracted by 1, and so it's going to be x to the exponent of 0, so that's going to be 1. And then 2y, well, y is a constant, so, well, this is going to be a constant, if you differentiate a constant, you get 0, and you get 6 right here. And then we have to find fxy. fxy should be equal to fyx is of Clarett's theorem. So we're just going to find fxy. So for fxy, we are going to differentiate this part with respect to y. So this is going to be a constant. So derivative of 6x here is going to be 0. Then plus derivative of 2y, it's going to be just 2. And this is going to be just 2. And then f, y, y, we are going to differentiate this with respect to y. So these are constants, right? 2x and 5 is a constant. They're constants, so derivative of 2x is going to be 0. And then 8y, well, derivative of 8y with respect to y, right? So it's just going to be 8. Okay, and then plus 5, 5 is a constant. So 0 right here, and then 8, just like that. So now we are going to apply the second derivative test. The second derivative test, the formula is dxy, right? This x and y represents this critical point right here. This is going to be an x and this is going to be a y, right? And then it's equal to fxx times fyy minus fxy. And then we have to square this. You can think of this 
second derivative test as if it's like um it's like a matrix with f x x and f x y here y x here and f y y a matrix and then you have to find a determinant of that and usually when you find a determinant of a matrix like let's say you have matrix a b c d right normally when you find a determinant of that you have to multiply a d and then minus b c so this is basically the same thing it's like f x x this is our a and our d is here so f y y then minus our b which is f x y times our c f y x and f x y is equal to f y x so that's why we just square f x y because we know they're equal here so this is just basically f x y this one right here that's why we square it and so we're going to do that so our d in this case right 5 22 negative 15 22 and then we have fxx, we have to sub that in, and that's 6, as shown here. So 6, and then our fyy, fyy as shown here is 8, sub that in, minus, what's our fxy? It's 2, so 2, we're going to sub 2 in and square it, it says square here. And then we have 48 minus 4, 48 minus 4 is 44, so we are going to write that. 44. Now, if you were to sub these in, um, and let's say this fxx or fxy or fyy has like, let's say an x here or a y here or something like that, like, or some, something like this, okay? When you sub these in, you're going to have to plug in the values of x and y, and these values come from this here. So this would be our x and this would be our y. Sub it in. However, in this case, we don't actually, like when we found the, um, the second order derivatives, we didn't actually have any x or any y, so we don't need to do that. We didn't sub anything in for that reason, and we just get these nice numbers. So here we have 44, and 44 is greater than 0. So basically, if we look at it and we have this point, right, d, a, b, DAB is greater than zero, then that means we will have a max or a min. So in this case, our DAB is greater than zero. So that means we have a max or a min. And of course, if um, if say DAB, right, like we found DAB to be greater than zero, but let's say if we didn't, if it's less than zero, right? AB is our critical point, by the way, so. So it represents. So um, if we, if it was less than zero, then that would basically tell us that we have a saddle point. But if it was greater than zero, it means we have a max or a min. So how do we know if we have a max or min? Well, if f x x is greater than zero, and if f x x is less than zero, these tell us as to where we have a max or a min. So. If fxx is greater than zero, like if we plug in, like, if we, well, like, let's say this is, if there was an x here, right, Let, let's say there was an x beside six, like this, okay, we would have to plug in to reiterate, let's say, these points, right, the x, y, right, we would plug in the values from our critical points into these variables, but there isn't in this case, but if there was, okay, that's how we, we would evaluate fxx, but anyways, so if fxx is greater than zero, then that tells us that we have a local min. And if fxx is less than zero, then that tells us we have a local max. So we have three cases here. One, two, three. However, if let's say DAB is equal to zero, then the test is inconclusive, but we're not going to go there. So generally, there are going to be three cases. So in this case, we have 44 squared and zero. So our, in this case, our DAB is greater than zero, right? AB representing 5, 20, 5 over 22, comma, negative 15 over 22. 
squared root of 0 in this case, so we have either this one or this one. Now our fxx is equal to 6, so fxx, right, 6 is greater than 0, so this 6 here is greater than 0, and if 6 is greater than 0, then that tells us our fxx in this case is greater than 0. So in this case, we will basically have we will have a local min in this case. So therefore, we can say that this critical point, well, the location where it occurs is a local min. And to find the exact local min, we will have to plug these values back in to our equation, our original equation, and see what we get. So here's our critical point, and now we're going to plug this back into our equation, into the x and y's. So we're going to plug this in, so it's going to be 3 times 5 over 22 squared plus 2 times 5 over 22 times y is negative 15 over 22 plus 4 times y squared, negative 15 over 22 squared, and then plus 5 times negative 15 over 22. So we get this. So now we're going to simplify that, so 3 times, so 5 squared is going to be 25, 22 squared is going to be 484, and then here we have 2 times 5 times negative 15, right? So let's, let's try to keep the denominator the same, okay? So we're not going to simplify this 2 and 22, so just going to do 2 times 5 times negative 15. And that's, well, 2 times 5, we get 10, right? 10 times negative 15, so we have negative 50. So negative 50 over 22 times 22 is 22 squared, like we did before, so 484. And then here we have 4 times, what's 15 squared? 15 squared is 225. 15 squared is 225, so we write that. And then 22 squared, as mentioned before, 484. And then minus... It's 15 times 5, it's going to be negative 75. And then over 22, and then we multiply these together. 3 times 25, 75, or 4, 8, 4, minus 150 over 4, 8, 4, plus 4 times 2, 2, 5. Well, it's going to be 900 over 4, 8, 4 for this term. And then minus 75 over 22. And then we can see that we can combine these together because we have the same denominator. So 75 minus 150 plus 900 is going to give us 825. And then it's going to be all over 484. And then we have to subtract 75 over 22. We can find a common denominator in this case, right? 484 is 22 squared, so we're going to find a common denominator, so 825 minus 75 times 22 is going to give us 1650. This is all over 484. And if we actually subtract these, right, we're going to get negative 825 over 484. And here we can simplify this sort of fraction because 825 is divisible by 11 and so is 484 because 484 is divisible by 22 so it means it's divisible by 11 so we're going to divide by 11 at the top and the bottom and we are going to get negative 75 in the numerator and then in the denominator we are going to get 44 if we divide 484 by 11. I'm going to get 44 here. And it looks like we can't simplify this even further because the prime factorization, if we try out 75, is just going to be, it's going to be, well, this is the same as 5 times 15. I'm thinking of two factors. 5 times 15, well, 15 is the same as 3 times 5, right? So this is 3 times 5, this is 15, and then times 5. And then we know 44, same as 4 times 11, which is 4 times 4 times 11, well 4 is the same as 2 times 2, and then times 11 here. We don't see anything in common, so this is therefore a final answer. And here, as mentioned before, 
This is our local min. This is our local min. And so our local min, so our local min is with the critical point, which is 5 over 22 comma negative 15 over 22 equal to this value right here. So this is the value at our local min. And therefore, this is our local min. Okay, so this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. And if this video helps, feel free to give it a big thumbs up. And also let me know in the comments down below what you think about this video and about finding the, the max and min and the saddle point. Furthermore, if you enjoy my content, feel free to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much everyone, I hope to see you next time for another math video. Bye!